We look forward then to our pre-final in the Rotax Seniors here at Vakersdorf for the third round of the 2015 Championship. Chris Hartley and Chris Dawes here in the commentary box. We're looking forward to an absolute cracker and Chris has got the grid with Rinus van Kalmthut taking his maiden pole position and his maiden season of senior racing. Yeah, and what a happy boy he was last night and a happy father with him as well when we did the interview. So he, uh, he thoroughly enjoyed that. He has the pole position in 219. Alongside him is Pierce Lahane that just lost out due to uh, basically being just bumped out of the way that puts him down into second position. So he's going to be trying to get up. Denis Mavlanov and Sam Marsh on row two. Row three is Luke Varley and John Stewart. Jacob Kadlak and Javier Gonzalez on row four. On the fifth row, Jonathan Aberdeen and Patrick Pastorok. Row six is Jay Nijar and Harry Webb having a much better weekend than he had in Italy. Seventh row, Luke Valenz and Nicky Cress. Row eight, Adrian Renardin and Shane Daly. On the ninth row, Glenn Van Paddis and Martin Mortensen. On the tenth row, we have Carlos Gio and Christopher Dreyspring. Just behind them on row 11 is Luke Montfort and Ed Brand. Row 12, Maurizio van der Laan and Max Aitken. Thirteenth row, Julian Falcero and Alessandro Trombelli. He's going to be hoping to pull up through after qualifying sixth on Friday. Fourteenth, Victor Oberg and Carol Dabsky. Then it's those that were in the second chance heat. Row 15, Brett Ward and Burke Besler. Watch those two come through the field. 16th row, Daniel Macek and Petra Bezel. And on the 17th and final row, Nicholas Pico and John Grams. That means there's a lot of cards, doesn't it, basically? One or two. <laughs> 34 of them. They all want to win. And they're all quick because these drivers are the very best from their respective countries right across not just Europe but the world. So even the drivers at the back of the field here are quality drivers and we saw that in seniors in particular when only seven tenths of a second separated 45 drivers the top 45 <laughs> in qualifying arenas van kamtoot then is about to lead them round. chris for the start of the race take it away yep here they go they're in the corridor we're going to get a clean start this time that looks promising so far although there may be that uh 206 Pierce Lahane had managed to get into the lead there he does look like he is there but uh, I'm not sure whether Thomas Liner is concerned about that when he's keeping an eye on it but they're all bunching through and as we expected that pinch point up at turn number three a couple of them span round but it looks like everybody has been able to get going but I think it is Pierce Lahane that's in the lead at the moment I think Van Kalm tucked in behind him for second uh, initially but I think he might have dropped to third now let's have a look when they come back through in front of us yes yeah, uh, Sam Marsh in second place. As Sam comes from third on the grid. He obviously stuck in behind Piers Lane. He's got a very similar uh, livery to Van Kalmthout. So in second place he goes. Van Kalmthout, the pole sitter, is tucked in behind in third place as they go down the back straight for the first time. Up towards top speed and then into this right-hander at turn number 12. Over the line goes our race leader, Piers Lahane, about three, four lengths clear. Sam Marsh second. Rinus Van Kalmthout is next up. Patrick Pastorak has driven really well this weekend and he's got already up to fourth place from tenth on the grid. John Stewart with another good start. He's there in fifth place. Javier Gonzalez has made good progress as well. He's in sixth. Dennis Mavlanov, Luke Varley, Jakob Cadillac and Luke Valelms are the other drivers inside the top ten. Watch for some quick drivers coming through from the back of the grid having come through the second chance heat as well. But Pierce Lahane is controlling this one at the moment in the early stages. The Australian beginning to pull clear on this second lap of the race. Through turn nine, it's close though for second. Second, third, fourth, all bunched together as they make their way through the S's here. And uh, Van Kamptoot has got back up to second place ahead of Marsh. So Marsh down to third place over the rise, down over the roller they go. And we've got yellow flags because somebody has uh, come off down at the uh, end of the back straight into turn 12. Two carts have come together there, I'm afraid. So that's why there are waved yellow flags. Lahane, Van Kamptoot, Marsh, Pastorak, Stewart and Gonzalez now come through. No changes inside the top nine, but we've got Martin Mortensen and Jonathan Aberdeen now up onto the fringes of the top ten. That was uh, Ed Brand and 260 oh Nicholas dear. Pico, unfortunately, were involved in that. They have managed to drag their carts out and off they go. Here comes our leader through the chicane, turn eight as we've called it, Pierce Lahane. And uh, in second position now, our pole man, Renus Van Kamptout, has just managed to... Uh, well, a little bit of a gap there, although we've seen that change rather quickly. Is he able to focus on the car in front, but under braking, heading into that turn number 11, which is a position, a, a corner where a lot of people do try to make a move, but you have to be wary that it compromises your exit speed. But uh, the third position, Sam Marge, is des definitely looking as he heads into these hairpins, but at the same time, just behind him is uh, the Patrick Pastorak 292 car, and he's determined to see if he can get involved and make this a three, where they go around that turn three, 
And I think that Sam Marsh has just been relegated and in fact Pastrak has got himself up into that third position. Denis Mavlanov gained a position at turn 11. So he's got himself back up into the top six now. The race leaders though are about to fire themselves through the chicane. The gap from first to second is definitely coming down. So Lahane being caught up a little bit here by Van Kalmtut. He's driven really well this weekend. And then Pastorak up to third ahead of Marsh now as they come back into sight. Marsh have tumbled a couple of other places down the order as well by the looks of things. So I think he might be out of the top six. And Mavlinov pulls off another move to go up to fourth place now. So Mavlinov on John Stewart that was up at the right hand at turn number 11. So Mavlinov flying at this stage of the race trying to come after the top three now. He's there in the number 236 cart. Stewart down to fifth. Sam March crosses the line in six. And Luke Varley has just gone up to seventh place with Gonzalez, the Mexican, just behind him in eighth position. A look at the inside there from somebody further back inside the top ten. But actually, there were no changes for once down at turn number three. We've got ten laps to go, including the one that we're on. The fastest lap has been set by Jay Nijar, actually, of 51.648. He's there in eleventh place. Harry Webb, by the way, the defending champion, lost a few places off the start. He was twelfth on the grid and he's got back up. Uh, just outside the top 10 now in 13th, but he did tumble, I think, to 15th or 16th at one stage. But uh, he might start picking drivers off now in the 201 car. He's just catching up to the back of his next target, which is Martin Mortensen. You've got Jane Ajar just ahead as well, who's a quick driver. So here we see this tussle, and there could be a change as they come over the line side by side here. Number 265 was having a go there. It was John Stewart. That was to try and get his place back, but he didn't. So Lahain, Van Kaltud, Pastorak and Mavlanov are our top four. And just at the back of the top six, there might be an issue as well. Marsh and Varley uh, were going side by side. Varley's up into the top six now. So Luke Varley having a terrific drive here, particularly over the last couple of laps. Through the chicane then, Pierce Lane holding firm. A couple of lengths clear of Van Kalmtut. And now up into third place is Pastorak with Mavlanov not that far behind in fourth. I think Mav Mavlanov is on a mission, isn't he? He's starting to reel them in. It's, uh, it it's quite a gap between first and second but I would say that the second, third, fourth are relatively equidistant at the moment which could mean that they can work together and move themselves forward quite comfortably there because they're not actually forcing themselves to go defensive but uh, those four are definitely away from the fifth position which is Luke Varley in that fifth position now John Stewart is recovering he's uh, down in seventh position but remember we have seen him in fifth we've seen also that he can carry through we've had another challenge up into turn three there that really is a popular overtaking move here today on the Sunday isn't it but uh, look at this Pierce Lahane is just starting to stretch his legs that little bit more as they go forward so cart 206 Pierce Lahane still from Renus van Kamp out of the uh, pole position man he openly said that uh, he, he felt that Pierce Lahane had the charge on him yesterday in that final race but uh, Oh, and we've got a challenge there for that fourth position, third position, sorry. And moving up does go. And Dennis Mavlinov, we said he was on a mission. He's done it. Tidy move. That's somebody who's retired uh, on the run down to turn five. Uh, out of the cart, dragging it away. It's number 270. 270 uh, out by looks of things. That's Jane Ajar, who was just outside the top ten. Fastest lap of the race has gone to Brett Ward from near the back of the grid. He's into the top 20 now. So trying to recover this weekend that started well with pole position on Friday. Started well yesterday with a win in his first team and then went a bit pear-shaped. Oh, a couple of moves and slips and slides just on the fringes of the top ten on the way into the hairpin. Dennis Mavlanov, having gone up to third place, is now starting to eat into the advantage of Renus van Kaltud in second. So there on your screens is Mavlanov with the green helmet, closing in on the pink and uh, blue helmet of Renus van Kaltud. The Dutch driver is only 14 years of age. He gives away four or five years to some of these drivers. But he has, of course, plenty of experience as a junior. Then again, most of these drivers spent a long time in juniors before they got to this phase of their career. Lahane is just starting to get his head down now and pull away from them. He's done a personal best there at 51.597. Having said that, the two behind him were as quick. In fact, Denis Mavlanov is the quickest man on the circuit at the moment in terms of that lead group. So third catching second, second to a tiny degree catching the race leader. But if Mavlanov can quickly dispatch of Rinus van Kaltuk, Chris... He's got a chance with five and a half laps of catching the leader. He certainly does. And this is about the time that he's going to need to make that move. Otherwise, it's going to be too little, too late. And look, as he comes down towards the popular overtake move down at turn nine, he's very, very close. I think he was just basically making sure that Renus van Kamptamp knew he was there. But that's a very mature head on young shoulders. And he's throwing up the inside at 11. Renus can now switch back. Is he going to be able to carry the speed? <laughs> no, he isn't. And there's that hand movement that they all like to try and do, where they suggest, follow me. No, I'm going to try and pass you. <laughs> 
Right, let's see. Mavlin, I'd follow, I'd follow him if I was you, Rinas, because he's the quickest driver out there at the moment in that lead group. And if you can do what he's doing, you might both catch Piers Lahane. Five laps to go. Second and third will now work together. They're pulling away from fourth, which is Pastorak, who's had a really good debut here. Luke Varley's there in fifth. John Stewart in sixth in that next group. Sam Marsh, seventh at the moment. Jonathan Aberdeen is back up to eighth. Jakob Kadlak is in ninth. And Harry Webb is into the top ten now. So Harry Webb up to tenth place. The fastest driver in terms of the overall best lap of the race is still Brett Ward from a couple of laps ago as he, in the 207 car, continues to try and work his way through the order. Mavlanov still being shadowed by Van Kaltoot into the left-hander at turn 11 where he's pulled off two good moves in recent laps. Four to go. Now, this is the interesting lap. We're going to see what the lap times are like and whether he can close in on the Australian. So, Pierce Lehane over the line, the leader. 51.587, Mavlanov 51.395, so he is quicker by almost two tenths, eight tenths of a second is the gap, but if he keeps up at that rate, he'll just about get onto the tail of Lehane on the final lap, but he won't, Chris, have much time to find a move. He certainly won't, and plus you wonder whether Pierce Lehane is still just about driving within himself, not pushing him as hard as he needs to if someone was breathing down his neck. And as the, uh, the saying goes within racing, it's one thing to catch, it's another to pass, so he's going to have to find probably another tenth or two to be able to close it in per lap with only three and a half laps left to go now. So it is still Pierce Lehane. He will possibly realise that he can't see them when he uh, flips back on the, on the hairpin anymore because it is getting that little bit closer. But as I say, I do believe that Pierce Lehane is driving within himself as they go across the line and three laps left to go. Harry Webb up to ninth place now. 51.6 for the leader, a 51.4 for Mavlanov. So he's taken another two tenths out of Pierce Lehane. Closes up under braking into turn three. He's certainly left behind Rinas van Kalmtoot now, who's looking for third place. Some changes into turn three further back. One and two try and gain a place into that part of the course. But the leaders, that's the one to keep an eye on now because first and second, that gap is coming down and down and down. And Pierce Lehane is going to be under severe pressure in the not-too-distant future from Denis Mavlanov. Down into the left-hander at turn nine. He's taken another chunk out of the Australian under braking there. And he's carrying the speed out of the corners as well. Mavlanov, a star this weekend. He's having by far his best weekend of the year. His best weekend so far in his career. It's all the brother racing in Formula Renault. And over the line he goes. And that gap surely has come down again from six tenths to three tenths of a second. A 51.329. Fastest lap of the race. So it's gone to Christopher Dreyspring further down the order with a 51.2. Well, the difference there was three tenths of a second between those lead two in terms of lap times. The gap between them is three tenths of a second. But look at this. They're absolutely nose to tail now as they're heading round turn six into turn seven. Then they head back towards us on this little chicane that we call turn number eight. Pierce Lehane, 206, just about has the lead. But is he going to maintain it? This is a popular overtaking move. I don't think he's close enough there. He's taken a very wide line there. I think he's getting ready for a move as we head up towards turn number 11 because he's taking a speed. He is indeed having a look up. This oh. contact, that was from a little bit too far back. Has that been the, the last opportunity because he's compromised his exit speed massively? And look how Rinas van Kampt comes onto him now because he just got much better exit speed onto that back straight. So that's where he pulled off two great moves. It got him from third, then into second. He tried it on Pierce Lane. He's a bit too far back, as you say, and he just clipped the right corner of Pierce Lane's wheel. Pierce looked over his shoulder in disgust. What's all that about, he says. It was a genuine attempt. It wasn't a dirty drive. Uh, Dennis with a genuine attempt to try and get the lead there. We're on the last lap of the race, though. He's dropped him back. And now he's probably more concerned with trying to hang on to his second place. Van Kampt it much closer to him. Pierce Lane, though, is still slightly nervously looking over his shoulder as he makes his way into turn nine. Van Kampt in third place there. But third on the grid for the final later on, don't forget, would not be a bad position to be in. Renus comes out of the last turn. In fourth place, we've still got Pastorak Stewart is fourth. Uh, fifth rather and Marsh is in sixth place into the final turn now and through goes Rinas van Kalmtoot to steal second place over the line Pierce Lehane wins the race van Kalmtoot at the very death there nicking second place away from Denis Mavlanov third place uh, fourth place goes to Pastorak fifth place to Stewart Marsh is over the line in sixth Aberdeen in seventh Varley in eighth Harry Webb ninth Martin Mortensen in tenth place and the uh, Fastest lap of the race to Christopher Dre Spring with a 51.234, albeit he finished uh, down in, I think, 19th place there. So fabulous stuff. Pierce Lehane coming under severe pressure there. Mavlanov had a go for the lead. It was perhaps 
just you know, didn't slight, didn't quite work out for him. It was a fair crack of the whip, that's for sure. It didn't quite work out that time. It delayed him. It brought Rinus van Kanto back into it, and instead of getting the win, Dennis Mavlanov ends up down in third place. There are the results. Strawberry Racing's Pierce Lane wins by 0.7 of a second from Renus van Kalmtoot for Dems Racing. So they will line up on the front row, of course, for the final. Lehane will be on pole. Van Kalmtoot second on the grid. Danis Mavlanov will be one still to watch in the final. He's been a star this weekend. The KR Sport driver uh, third in the race. Fourth place to Patrick Pasterak. Fifth place to John Stewart. Sixth place to Sam Marsh. Seventh to Jonathan Aberdyne. 8th to Luke Varley, 9th to Harry Webb, 10th to Martin Mortensen, and the fastest lap of 51.234 going to Christopher Drayspeen. There's the rest of the runners. I'm afraid Jane Ajar and Nicola Pico, two non-finishers. Ed Brand got going again, but down in 30th place for the driver who was second in the championship. I fancy he might not be second anymore once we get the update of the championship points. So Jane Ajar pushes his cart back home and have another crack at it later on. We've got DD2 uh, coming up. RGMMC TV will be able to hear from uh, Luca Kamali fairly soon after pole position from yesterday. So a great race from Seniors 1 by Pierce.